Hi, my name is Marcia Talley, and I am your child's geometry teacher. And I am flipping the classroom this semester, and I thought you might want to know a little bit about what that means. So when you hear your child say that the classroom has been flipped, you might want to know what that means. And that means that the traditional classroom, the student comes to class, the teacher lectures, they get their assignment, they go home, and they do their homework out of the book, generally. In a flipped classroom, their homework, the, the assignment that they have to do at home, is to watch the lecture, then they come to class, and during that time, they get to work on their book work or other activities that I have planned for them. So basically, it's just kind of a twist or a flipping of what a traditional classroom would be like. Now, you might be wondering, why would I flip my classroom? Well, there's a lot of educators out there right now who are finding out that this is a, a positive things, a positive uh, experience for students. There's a lot of good things to come out of this. But for me personally, I did try this last year at the end for just three chapters. And... Um, I always felt like I was cramming is, you know, 50 minutes, we gotta get this, this, and this, and this, and then there was hardly any time to help kids with their homework. And I really feel like this is opening up the classroom to give more time to help and kind of slow things down and just really kind of soak in and digest some of the mathematics. Um, the good thing for students is when they're watching this video, they have the opportunity to pause. They can, I don't think I should use the word rewind, but they can go back and watch a problem over. Uh, they can watch entire videos over when they're reviewing or studying for a test. If kids are sick, they can still get the information they need. Um, and what, from my experience from doing this last year, one of the things I really appreciated too was some kids, you know, if you only have 10 or 15 minutes at the end of class to do the assignment, and I've got questions from students that they need help, it's like bing, 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 you gotta rush around and, and once again, rush through the class period and rush through helping that kid, where with the, the flipped classroom, it does allow me the chance to sit down and actually have some quality time with students and help them with their assignments and find out some of the issues they're having with their learning. So that's those are the reasons why um, I flipped my classroom. However, for this to work, the the, the expectation is that the students have to watch the videos. I have to require them. Um, so they're going to have to take notes. That's how I'm going to know. Uh, the notes are required, and I will teach them on the first day of class. Then we'll watch one together, and I'll tell them what I expect from their notes. And they may very well get a quiz over those notes, either at, right the next day or it could be at the end of the chapter. Um, in addition, I have activities planned, little short like reinforcement activities, and I, they, they're going to be dependent upon them knowing that information, so they have to watch the videos for that. And, and I can imagine if you didn't watch a video for an entire chapter's worth, that's a lot of examples you're missing, a lot of modeling of how the math works that would be missed, and I, it would not be advantageous for students to not watch the videos. They must watch those videos to see what's happening. Uh, one of the questions that I had from students last year was like, "How I can't watch the videos, how will I ask a question? Well, when you're taking those notes, you write down the question that you have, and then when you come back to class, you get an opportunity to ask that question. Um, the, the downfall, that is one of the downfalls of the flipped classroom, there's a delay between having the question and getting it answered, but it will be answered, just not as immediate as it would be in a traditional setting. Um, I don't want you to think this is black and white flipped classroom. In general, this is how things are going to go. But there will be times where maybe for a review for a test or um, maybe they just didn't get the assignment done in class even though there would be extra time in comparison, maybe it still just didn't get done. But the amount of work they're doing out of that book should be greatly diminished and you should see a lot more they should be watching the video for sure. That does not mean there's a video every single night. I would say three to four times a week and less even sometimes. So yeah, you'll still see or you should see a book open at home occasionally but not nearly the amount that you're used to seeing uh, in, in a traditional type of setting. Uh, some current concerns that I think that parents might have um, that you have extremely slow internet which if you do or you don't have internet at all, you're not watching this video. But if it does become a problem, um, 
we do have other options for the kids to view these videos. So just make sure you let me know or have the student let me know and we'll, we'll make work out that plan. And then <laughs> computer issues, technology issues, the electricity goes out, the computer doesn't work. Um, your kid, your son or daughter stayed overnight at a friend's house, they didn't have internet. I'm still expecting the videos to be watched for class. So make sure there's a plan B. And that can be that they're dropped off at school early uh, to watch them in the media center. Um, friend with a cell phone. There's lots of different ways. There's so many opportunities to watch this. Um, distractions. I, I, I had students last year that were like, I tweet all the time or I'm texting. And it really is a valuable skill, especially in today's age, that we know how to focus in and, and learn from videos and learn from the technology. So um, and you can go to college and get your entire college via the computer without ever having to step into a traditional classroom. So <clears throat> this would be something that would launch them on learning that right away. So kind of be aware that that's kind of a major issue for teenagers, um, distractions while they're watching the video and they're going to have to learn how to be focused in. And once again, that pause button, it should be wonderful op option for kids. And then um, not only that, but because of my concern with that, and I don't want you to think that they're going to be watching an hour of me giving a video, but the videos are, my goal is to have them under 20 minutes or right around at the most 20 minutes. I'm not making any guarantees, but that's the plan. And some might be under 10 minutes. There will be days that it's two videos, but the total should still be under 20 minutes. Um, all right, and the last thing I want you to do, if you would be so kind, I would love it if you would just send me an email at mtally at fergusotters.org. Um, any comments or concerns that you have, any positives that you think or concerns, if you have nothing you want to share, that's fine too. Just share some information about your child. I would love to, you know, get some some insight from you that maybe I wouldn't get in the classroom. And if nothing else, I wouldn't mind if you just emailed me and said just hi, and then at least I have that email contact already begun with you in case I need to use it later in the semester. So uh, I hope we have a wonderful semester. Uh, with I hope to have a wonderful semester with your child, and we hope that it's a, a good start to the 2012-2013 school year. Thanks. <laughs>